My roommates are probably listening to this right now and they're probably like, I'm moving out. <laughs> you're past due on your rent. Do your roommates know that you are the landlord? I did have one bad experience with a roommate. I am coming up on living in my house now for almost two years and I thought it'd be fun to do an update for you guys. A top comment on one of my videos recently was like, can you talk about what it's like living with roommates? And people really wanted to know what it's like me being the landlord living with roommates. Also, some of you guys, I, I guess I forget to mention it, but this happens to me just, I don't know, in my daily life when I'm talking to someone and I'm like, oh yeah, my roommates, like people don't know that I have roommates, but I do. I've had roommates for like a year and a half. So I wanna talk about what it's like having roommates, especially as the landlord. Why I even did it to begin with. I was not ready to live alone. I don't like being alone that much. I could do it and I'm sure I would get used to it and it would be fine. But when I come home and my roommates aren't home like at night, I get kind of sad. I'm like, where is everyone? Like I genuinely enjoy having people around. Financially, that's the biggest pro of why you would do something like this, like buy a place and then have roommates. They're gonna help you pay your mortgage down and it's gonna be a better deal than any anything else you could ever do. So the pros definitely are, I've made amazing friends through it that I'm so happy that I have and I get to live with and it's fun. Financially, it's the best deal you could ever get. And my roommates are super respectful and they take care of the house. Honestly, probably more than me. So now moving into the cons, because of course no living situation is perfect. I bought the house and I did live in it alone for a couple of months. When someone did move in, it was a weird transition of being like, this isn't just my house anymore. It's our house. And even though technically it's my house, this person is paying money to be here. So they have every right to use it in the same way that I'm gonna use it. It took maybe like two days of feeling kind of weird at first. And then I just got over it and was like, I'm not going to be that person that freaks out over every, like spi over spilled milk. Like literally spill milk all over the floor. I, I don't care. It just comes with the territory. If we're gonna have roommates, things are gonna go wrong. Things are gonna break, things can get messy, they're gonna have people over, spending the night sometimes, just things like that. That's something that going into it, I very, very quickly was like, okay, I don't even think of it honestly as my house very often. If you live with people, things aren't going to, you know, be the way that you left them. Things aren't gonna be pristine every moment. I find that in the living spaces, you know, just at any given time, things are a little messy. Not always, I don't get annoyed by that because I'm not like some type A kind of person that needs everything to be in its place all the time. I'm kind of a little messy. We're down in the living space of my house and I wanted to show you guys, truly being real with you, what it looks like right now. There is never enough room in the fridge. It's always packed. This is my shelf and I just can't even really keep it organized. It's just constantly packed in here and you can't really avoid it. And the second thing is with three people versus one, things just get messier, a little bit dirty, quicker. It's not a big deal actually, you know, just stuff being around. Where it's concerning is parts of the house that get dirty that you forget about. So I've been trying to be better about maybe like once a week, just deep cleaning, having a nice little reset set and refresh. I definitely need to do that today. So I'm going to do a little clean with me really quick. Today's video is sponsored by Clorox Sentiva. So I'm going to start with the floors because seriously, they're kind of gross. I have laminate flooring, I believe this is, and it is so good at hiding dirt. So my floors are the number one thing that gets overlooked, but I'm trying to make it a goal to clean them like at least once a week. What I like to do is take the Clorox Sentiva disinfecting wet mopping cloth. The Clorox Sentiva wipes kill 99.9% .9 of germs and they come in extraordinary scents. Okay, let's see how dirty these floors are. <laughs> So, okay, yeah, these need it real bad. Okay, this might sound really cheesy, but I like to switch up the scents of my cleaning products because I don't know if this has happened to any of you guys, but the smell of cleaning products make me so nostalgic. So there's this one cleaning product I used to use when I lived in California, and one time I bought it and started using it in Washington, and it immediately brought me back to that moment of living in California with my sister Shelby, and I was like getting all of my feels while I was cleaning. 
cleaning. So I like to switch up my cleaning products just kind of in different phases of life because right now I have this Pacific Breeze and Coconut one that smells really summery. I'll probably switch it up in the fall and winter and then one day I'll just bring it back out and I'll probably remember all my nice summer memories. I know that's really cheesy, but you should try it because it's kind of cool to like be able to bring back memories with your senses like that. Okay, just finished cleaning. Kills 99.9% .9 of germs. Like I could eat off the floor right now. Thanks again to Clorox and Tiva for sponsoring this video. Fun fact, while I was cleaning, both my roommates came out and were like, it smells so good in here. So I would definitely recommend roommate approved Pacific Breeze and Coconut. And if you have roommates, this is a reminder to um, clean up, do a deep clean. So when it came to finding roommates, I didn't know anyone friend wise that needed a place to live. I had a strategy about this. I took the first couple months and lived in my house by myself and I furnished it by myself because A, I was really excited about that. I was like, this is my house, I get to furnish it exactly how I want. So I did that, I furnished it, I got it looking really nice. I think that is a big reason why it was so easy for me to rent my house. Because when I posted on Facebook Marketplace, my house for rent, I showed photos of the common spaces. So like the kitchen, the living room, like decorated, looking cute. Because I decorated it nicely, at least I think it looks nice, it attracted people that wanted to live in a space that they wanted to respect. So that's my tip to you. If you're someone in this position that's considering having roommates and you just bought a house, you should decorate the place first. You don't have to buy the most expensive things because yes, they will get a little worn down, but try and make it look stylish. Like try and just make it put together because I really do think it attracts the right people. But before I actually posted, I looked on the housing groups and I saw who was posting that they needed housing. Cause I was like, I don't know if I want to post my own house. Like I feel weird about this. So so I would see other people like looking for a bedroom this rate in this neighborhood and that's actually how I found my first roommate. She had posted that she was looking for a place. I clicked on her profile, I saw she looked normal and so I messaged her and was like, hey, I have a room, like here's more info on it if you'd like. She wasn't in the area yet. She actually needed to commit to finding a place before moving. So we actually hopped on a FaceTime call and just chatted for probably like 15 minutes and I showed her the room and she seemed normal. So I was like, sure, yeah, you can have it. It's all yours. So my first roommate, I literally agreed to before or even meeting her. I just went into it looking at it like I want to find people that are the most similar to me that I think that I could be friends with. Not that we need to be friends, but we need to get along and if they seem similar to me and they're around the same age, I think this will work out. And she definitely seemed like that, so I went with it. So she was planning on moving in in a couple months and in the meantime, I did put out a posting on Facebook Marketplace and I got like 30 messages within 24 hours. It was crazy. So if you ever are afraid you're not gonna be able to find someone, trust me, you will. There are so many people constantly looking for housing. That's when I learned firsthand, I was like, like, wow, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna have a problem finding someone. I really kind of got to, everyone applied at the same time, so I got to kind of just choose who I wanted. Through those messages, I messaged back everyone. You know, it doesn't feel good to be ghosted, especially when you're looking for a place to live. You know, some people wanted something that was furnished, some people wanted something unfurnished, everyone was different, some things just weren't a good fit. But the ones where it seemed like it could have been a good fit, I messaged them and said, hey, yeah, you can come check out the room. You better hurry up, because there's a ton of other people that want to see it too, and I'm trying to fill it. So I had about four or five people come through to look at it, and it was all within a day or two. And then ultimately, I just chose who I thought thought was gonna be the best fit. Both my roommates were like getting into their jobs, I guess, after college. And so it just felt like the right fit with both of them because they're kind of in the the same parts of life that I would be in if I weren't a YouTuber and that a lot of my friends were in. And that's that. So I asked you guys to ask me questions. Do your roommates know that you are the landlord? So that is something I consider. I've gotten a lot of questions that are like, is it awkward being the landlord? I mean, naturally, it's a weird dynamic when you think about it. And it probably was sort of awkward at first. And I don't know how they feel. Maybe they do feel that way. I certainly hope they don't feel that way. But yeah, I thought about it first. Like, do I, do I just like, 
not say anything about me being the landlord. It only took me a couple minutes to realize how would I get away with that? Like, oh, our landlord, and I'm just talking about myself. And I was like, what if they like one day are like, this house sucks, or like, I don't like this, I don't like that. Like, I, that would be really awkward too if all of a sudden I'm like, oh, well, I own it. But it was also weird for me to explain to them. Yeah, I'm looking for roommates, like, I own it. Oh, I make YouTube videos. Um, yeah, it's fine. You can look me up, whatever. It was like just as weird of a thing for me as it is for them. And it was like something that was very new for me and new for them. And so I feel like the feeling of the weirdness surrounding it is just mutual. Did you have a lawyer write the lease or did you do it? I just Googled Washington lease contract. There's a website, it's like rocketlawyer.com and it comes up with just the standard lease contract for Washington. I just filled it out, it was really easy and just sent it off for their signatures. I was really chill about it though. I was like, yeah, sure, a 12 month lease, but honestly, if you don't like living here, just give me like 30 days notice and you can leave. Someone asked, is it weird that they pay you to live there? I don't feel weird about it. Like I pay to live here. Why wouldn't they also pay to live here? Everyone's gotta pay to live somewhere. And someone else asked, do you feel weird asking for rent? No. Definitely don't feel weird about it. I mean, it's just through Venmo. It's so easy these days, you know? You don't have to be like, hey, rent's coming up. Can you write me a check? Does Oliver pay rent on time? Oliver, you're past due on your rent. You are like a year past due. You are so delinquent on your rent, Oliver. Is there a power imbalance? And that's an interesting question. I mean, I think naturally, yes, there kind of is. Like, I can decide whatever I want. I could decide that they need to leave if I wanted. You know what I mean? I could decide to sell the house. I could decide to add different furniture. I have that power that they don't have, but I would never do that. It's more so I think the, the only power imbalance I feel is I'm gonna make any decision on furniture and things like that, and they can do whatever they want with their rooms, but when it comes to decorating like the living spaces, I wanna keep that power. I like having that. Other than that, I don't think so. Do you recommend renting a room out as a first-time home buyer yes I love doing it you literally though have to just go from this is my home and I'm so excited about it to like this it is an investment are there rules you have on bringing guests over no there are no rules I like my roommates so typically anyone they have over like I like them as well I will say it's funny kind of looking back now but one of my roommates has a boyfriend they just started seeing each other right when she moved in and I think he like spent the night on like only her like it might have been like her first night there and that to me was weird because I was like I don't even know her yet and I don't know this guy and they're both just in the house and this is weird and it it totally made me feel uncomfortable in the moment but now it's funny because I look back and I know her and she's great and her boyfriend's great but yeah there's like no rules over like oh can you have an overnight guest like I mean we're young women in our 20s if my roommate wants to hook up with someone like she can do that and bring the guy home you know what I mean like if it were all the time it'd probably get annoying but we're all pretty tame people anyways so it's fine would you be cool with any of them having a pet okay that's an interesting question because I love animals but I already have an animal here and so it's hard because it's like they have to get along with my dog and he's already so territorial of the house I think it would just have to be a case-by-case -case scenario if I had a roommate that wanted to get a cat I'd probably be like no but if I had a roommate that wanted to get a dog and and it was like a small dog, I wouldn't be opposed. Honestly, I'd be kind of excited. But that also comes with like trusting my roommates. If it were a person I didn't know that long and they were like, can I get a dog? I'd be like, no, <laughs> definitely not. Definitely that's a case by case kind of basis. I think most people would just say no because it's the simple and easy answer, but I'm somewhat open to it. Any tips on vetting tenants? Yes, so I did have one bad experience with a roommate that I didn't tell you guys about and I don't want to go into too much detail 
Besides, it was just the wrong fit. I have my two roommates and I've had these two roommates since I've had my house. Um, but one of my roommates actually during COVID, she got an internship that was in Europe and it was a really great internship to the point where they allowed her to go to Europe even during COVID, really crazy. And I'm, I was totally happy for her. She was like, I need to leave for six months and then maybe she would come back and move back in or maybe she would go do her own thing. It was kind of up in the air, but that was fine. And she was gonna leave her furniture. And I was like, yeah, maybe I'll just like rent it out furnished. So this was also around the time I just got the house in Palm Springs. Everything just kind of happened really quickly. That's such a lie, no it didn't. I just didn't plan right. Buying the house in Palm Springs took forever, but I did not plan in advance. I was being lazy about it okay it's my own fault that this didn't work out well I, was, I put out a posting and again I got a bunch of responses but some people this time were being kind of flaky but then I was being kind of flaky too like someone would want to see it and then they would flake and be like actually can I tomorrow and I would have plans tomorrow and just didn't want to put in the effort then I went to Palm Springs and didn't have anyone downstairs and was like doing all these renovations and I was like, this is getting expensive. I should probably have someone living downstairs. And I got a message from this girl who actually toured the room when I originally posted it, like the very first time. And I didn't pick her, but she seemed really nice. And then, you know, she's messaging me. I'm already in Palm Springs. She's needing a place to live. She was nice. She was down to Venmo me, the deposit and everything right then and there. So I was like, sure, this will be fine, probably. I met her this one time, she seemed nice, this is gonna be all right. I'm like out of town anyways. So she pays me and she moves in and I just like didn't vet her at all. I asked her what she did, she was a nanny. And really you should ask for pay stubs, you should ask for their ID, you should ask for their ID, cause I didn't do that. She had said she had gone to a community college so I assumed she was like 23. I didn't even ask her how old she was, like I, I was just like, she seems nice, we'll get along, this will be fine. And in a lot of ways, she was like, on paper, your perfect roommate. He's the perfect roommate though, he's so perfect. She was super clean, she was really quiet, but she was just really young and like in a different place in life. So the first day she moved in, I actually was in town and I was like, oh yeah, how old are you anyways? And she said she was 21 and that's when I was like, oh. We might have a problem here. I didn't say that out loud, but in my head, I was like, this might be an issue. I think about myself when I was 21 and all I did was wanna like party a bunch. I was not responsible at all at that time. She didn't do anything like totally wrong, but she said she was 21 and then I later found out she lied about her age and she was actually 20. And I think she might've like just turned 20, like she was just 19. I just didn't trust her. After I found out she lied about her age, I didn't trust her and I felt really uneasy leaving the house because I guess there was like this time I was out of town but I guess she had different guys over like every night from dating apps and like guys she had just met and she was like bringing them over and they were spending the night and I wasn't in town for any of that I just heard about it afterwards but it definitely made me uncomfortable she quickly did get a boyfriend so that kind of stuff all stopped if it would have kept going i definitely would have said something like no you can't just have people over like this all all the time too yeah she got a boyfriend and so it, it was kind of fine but it also was like they would take over the kitchen kind of doing their thing like they would like have date night in the living room i feel like and they would just sprawl out on the couch for hours and no one else could really use the living room. It was just awkward. She was really nice, so it's fine, but I, I like literally, by the end of it, kind of like had to reserve the living room one night. Like I was like, hey, I'm having friends over, so I'm gonna use the living room. And that's when I started to feel like, so I'm gonna use my living room. Like, it was just a little weird. I also, okay, I never really said this, but I feel like it was kind of just an unspoken thing. I decorated the living space, the common areas, and I'm not, I, I don't really want other people's stuff encroaching in it. I made it like a neutral setting for everyone. So this girl, one day, she added a framed photo of her and her boyfriend and put it on the mantle in the living room. <laughs> And that, I did not like that. That made me feel like, oh, is this their house? Is this couple getting married and I'm living in their house? It was just so weird to me. And so that's kind of like my rule. I just don't want, like people's 
personal things really being in the living area like that. Like we don't need to be having like family photos on the mantle, you know? It's just weird to me, you know? But it just wasn't the right fit at the end of the day. That's all. That's it. And I could sense that the first time she looked and then I was just lazy the second time around. So basically, moral of the story, ask for their ID, a copy of their ID, like you need to see how old they are because apparently they will lie also. Do you ever regret this decision or do you think it was a financially smart idea? I definitely don't regret this decision and yes, it was a very financially smart idea. It's one of the smartest things that you can do. If you're gonna do it, you can't just be like, because it's the best financial decision, you have to also do what you like for your lifestyle as well because you can buy somewhere and live in it yourself and it's still gonna be a good financial decision. I think that's the bigger picture here that I don't regret choosing to live with people because that's something that I really like. This is definitely not for everyone. In fact, I don't really know many other people that do it, but you know, if you are in Seattle and you would like to buy a condo or a townhouse and get a roommate. I could definitely help you. I am a real estate agent after all, as we know. And having done it all myself now, I definitely think I could help guide you through the process. I actually have a client right now that I'm helping do that for and I'm really excited for him because it's worked out so well for me. I'm just excited for another person that you know wants to make this decision because it can be really great. You can meet really great people and you know, financially, it's awesome, so that's that.